hey guys we allow people to upload files in our slack clone and then we serve those files using express using this line right here now we're storing them in a folder right here called files but when we put it in a docker container um, we're putting it in the files in the container so when the container is destroyed any files uploaded in that files folder inside the container will be destroyed so similar to how with our um, image up here with the Postgres database, we set up a volume where we said all the data would be stored in a volume called PG data. And so when the container destroyed, it would persist. We need to do the same thing for our images or our files. So I'm gonna come down here to our web image and just add a volume. So I'm gonna say volumes and on our computer, it's dot slash files. And then I'm gonna say slash app slash files. Um, so this would be the folder inside of the container. And I did slash app in front of it because if we check out our Docker file, um, our working directory is slash app. Okay, so this is well and good. We'll now be able to persist any uh, files we upload but there's a better way than having our express server serve the static files. Now that we are using Engine uh, X, it is super fast and it's really good at serving static um, files, much better than Express. So we can just leave Express to um, serving GraphQL requests and have Engine X be the one that serves um, static files. So what we're going to do is change our nginx config to support this. So right here I'm going to add a new endpoint that we're going to grab and that's going to be slash files. So this right here matches what we're using here. And we're going to alias this to um, a folder on the container. So we're going to create a folder called slash files. So this we're gonna have to create in our container and this is where all the files are gonna be located and that's what we're gonna serve. So in our docker compose file over here, we want to um, add another volume for the files. And the cool thing about docker is you can have shared volumes. So both my web and my nginx can access this dot slash files. Um, here I'm gonna map it to slash files. So notice we're mapping it to two different places on the containers but on my computer, it's the same dot slash files folder. So now in the express server, if they upload a new file, they'll place it in the files folder and then both Nginx can get it and it can render the static uh, files. So cool. Um, next, we're just gonna say gzip underscore static on. What that does is it compresses the files when possible when sending it to the client. Next, we're going to tell the browser to um, cache the files if possible. And we're going to say expires um, max on that. And we're going to say add header. And we're going to say cache control. And you can set the cache control to public or private. We're going to set it to private since the images are private information. So this expires max here. The reason why we're saying it to max is because um, the images never really change. The names of them, the routes never change. So it's always going to match to the same image. So there's no reason to expire the cache. But what you could do is if you have something that would expire, you could set to one day or uh, pretty much any time you want. But we're going to keep it to max here. So this is good. That's all we need to do to set up Nginx and it'll now serve static files. But before I demo this for you guys and show you this working, uh, we need to make a quick fix. And that's our subscriptions. I totally forgot that uh, we're using subscriptions. So we're currently not proxying uh, WebSocket connections, which we need to do. So notice how we just have uh, location and we're grabbing uh, all requests. So it is grabbing subscriptions, but we need to do a special thing um, in particular for them. So if you remember, we are using the uh, slash subscriptions endpoint. It should be here somewhere. 
there we go so slash subscriptions endpoint so we need to create a new location here for that and then here is the documentation on docker on how to handle web sockets and proxying those so i'm going to copy this paste it here and now i'm going to put subscriptions now i gave this a try and for whatever reason when i have the slash here it broke it and when i got rid of it it worked so i'm going to get rid of that so we're going to proxy this to uh, web 8081 slash subscriptions um, and then I'm just going to keep these settings here these are the settings needed to proxy um, web request or not web requests but web sockets and then you'll notice here I'm not doing like web sockets here um, that's intentional you just need to do HTTP there and that's good um, so yeah now we're going to be handling subscriptions good and then in location here, now I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to slash GraphQL. I talked about that in the last video, um, but I forgot uh, we actually had other endpoints that we were supporting, so it's good that I kept this open. But now there's really only slash GraphQL. Maybe um, graphical too if we wanted to do that in production, but I'm not gonna open graphical up in production. So really the only endpoint I wanna expose for my uh, express server is really slash GraphQL. And I'll just let Nginx handle everything else. All right, this looks pretty good. The only other thing I wanted to change was over here. So now that we're using Nginx, the server URL that this picks up is actually um, web instead of a uh, local host. So it actually breaks when using this right now. So I'm gonna just get rid of this for now and we're gonna use an environment variable. So process.env.server uh, URL or I'll just set this to HTTP slash localhost. Okay, so and we can get rid of these args. So in development, we're just gonna do uh, use localhost and I guess I should say localhost 8081, I believe is what we need. Um, so this will work in development, and then whenever we release this pr to, into production, we'll just set the environment variable uh, to what we need it to be in production. So we don't need to set anything in our Docker file right now because we want it to actually access localhost 8081. All right, so that's it. So let's check out the changes we made. Let's make sure that subscriptions are working with Nginx and we can now upload files and they are being served. So I'm gonna come over here, just do npm run build because we just made a change to our source code. And so I'm just gonna build docker build. And then when that's done building, I'm just going to um, docker compose up and then we're gonna come back over to our server. I'm already logged in and everything, so we're just gonna try sending a message and then uploading a picture. So docker compose up. Okay. Oh, this is the other thing. I forgot about that. So we just got an error message invalid number, oops invalid number of arguments to the proxy set header uh, and we get this we exit basically nginx crashes so I'm gonna control C out of that and just docker compose down the reason we're getting that is because our docker compose over here we're running env subs I don't even know what this stands for but what that does is it actually substitutes in environment variables and so it thinks this is an environment variable when it's really not and since we're not using any environment variables in there, I'm just gonna use cat instead. Um, so we're just basically gonna cat this file into the correct location that we want it. So we don't do any kind of uh, environment uh, variable configuration. Now, if you need to do that, I'm not really sure how to escape this, um, but this is how you get rid of that error if you don't need to use environment variables. So come back over here docker compose up okay 
Okay, looks like things are still starting up. Engine X looks like it started up okay. Looks like our web is up now. So here's the site. Just do a quick refresh. Okay, so I'm just gonna say hello. Okay, so we see hello. So our web sockets are working, awesome. Now I'm just gonna drag Timo over here, paste him in, and cool, we see Timo pop up. So now we are serving these images using Nginx instead of Express, so that'll be faster, and we're telling the browser to cache it, so um, and to gzip it when possible to compress it. So now we should be serving images faster, which is nice. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.